Before we get into it, I recommend playing this game blind. Just go into it without any prior knowledge. I'll explain later in the video, but above all, it's a good game. Please understand that. Please play it. And don't let my rant dissuade you otherwise. Uh, I'll make this video into three sections. First one is a quick summary of the game in case you can't afford the time or money to get the game. Although, again, please play it first. Play it blind. It's only 10 bucks. Go support the, de the developer. Seriously. Second part is why I think the game is important, both in story and in its very existence. And the third part is a small tangent. With the menu in hand and time stamp somewhere on screen... I have been trying to find the right words to talk about this game for years and has been just, just out of reach, but this will be done. I am telling me this now. See, right, right here. You should play the first tree for real. I will finish it this time. Me editing this. I see you. A rough script is better than nothing. Thank you, Tumblr. So, this is the first tree. A game that, on paper, has a simple premise and execution. A game that, in my opinion, has far more important meaning outside the game than in the game, although, again, both are important, but I think its existence has a very high importance. If you have time in a night, block out two hours, just grab a glass of wine or pr preferred relaxation stuff, and just chill. It's a slow game. It's a good, artsy game. If you're used to high-energy shooter games or in-depth stories of fantasy, it, this might not be your thing, but still worthwhile at least to have once. If you just want to get the gist of it, I'll wait five seconds just in case you want to click off and do your own thing. I'll just start now. This game focuses on a dream that the narrator, Joseph, had. The player controls a fox, uh, running around in search for her cubs in a lush forest and later on rocky areas. Uh, she is in search of the first tree, where all life began, and I'm assuming where all life ends. The narration from Joseph and his wife, Rachel, accompanies your journey as Joseph talks about his past, specifically his relationship with his father and how kind of, well, not just kind of, but very troubled it was. The two narratives don't really overlap, aside from the fox digging up literal memories of the narrator in the form of old toys, sketches, newspapers, and other items. So the player is literally digging up the past to get to the current day. There are some items that emphasize the narration, but aren't quite described. You know, this probably happens more often than I would think. A fishing boat? Man, I miss the Etcher sketch. It didn't work well, but it was still so cool. The narrator does a good job of setting up your perspective and not just throwing you into their life mid-story. Sorry, I just can't sleep. Are you thinking about... about him? Yeah, a bit. You should get back to sleep, my love. I'm fine. No, no, it's okay. What else is on your mind? <sighs> I don't know. It seems weird, but I had one of the most vivid dreams of my life. Do you think it has to do with... with you and what's been going on? I don't know. It was just a dream, Rachel. They're not meant to make sense. A lot's happened the past couple days, that's all. Uh, the, it sets up a good beginning, and it makes you feel connected to them. There's also stars to collect in the way, and this you need for achievements. Uh, which you can do if you want to. Each area divides the narrative timeline so the player can keep pace. Cars outside my window, please keep driving. Each area divides the narrative timeline so the player can keep pace along with the story. Along with the fox cubs. That They also function as checkpoints. Speaking of, where... So, not far from her home, she followed that path to something unexpected. Oh. Well, that's... unfortunate. If you're noticing a lot of running footage, like running around, it's, it's kind of the only thing going on aside from digging in dirt. The older I got, the more I withdrew. I asked myself, why talk to anybody anyway? Why bother when I'm happy by myself? I started drawing a lot. And uh, mild puzzle elements. One. My only gripe with the game comes to the second area, a large forest that only has three points of puzzle interaction. It also reminds me of the path. I'll get to that too. Trust me, I will. The first section is spent setting up what the dream is about, why it matters, and why it's been recurring, and how it sort of introduces the idea of Joseph and his father having a troubled past. And it just sets the, the tone for later parts in the game, which again, very well done. The middle section sort of kills the pacing for me due to its size, but it serves the purpose of allowing some elaboration on the narrator's childhood. And some good moments with the dad, which is not all trouble, which is good. That shows the complexity of the life they had. So I would spend the day wasting time on dial-up internet and sketching. And then we would rush into the woods, pen and map in hand, before evening fell. But I do appreciate it, and it's kind of like being muddled in thought. And kind of like meandering around your own head for a long time. I get that, we've all been there. We unlock the tree path, and then, oh, we haven't seen a second cub yet, how are- The perpetrator stood nearby. Nothing was wrong. Oh. Well, that's... unfortunate. 
I'm going to kill you so hard, you son of a- After a literal descent into sadness, the narrator trails off and says he wants to go to sleep, that he's tired and sad. Understandable. But then his wife is like, oh, hell no, you aren't going to bed yet. You are sad, and you think you're the only one with a rough childhood? No, 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 no. And tells of her arguably more troubled childhood, or at least equally so, uh, in a really cool and trippy section that looks like you're walking on a lake of stars. You know what it's like not to have a mom at home. And you know how hard that made my childhood. I love the visuals. I love the fact that the deer literally guides you through this section. And even has a hopeful message about family at the end. You also get to see memories of her childhood via items, but significantly less than the narrator's, as is more of a tangent section. But it's really cool to see this in the middle, middle of the game. Sort of gives it a nice break, visually speaking, and calms things down. You have strength, Joseph. And you're not as alone as you think. Well, they were calm before, but it makes it more tranquil calm. And look at the deer in the field. It's all so cool and cute. Are stags that big? If so, you're worth a hundred bucks. I need to stop here and mention that the game's visuals are simple, beautiful, and amazingly well done. They're not the most shaded things in the world, they're not the most intricate, but that's what makes the game good. Uh, the developer, I should mention now, David Well, I'm gonna say Well, I don't know how to say that name, so David, uh, has a YouTube channel, or I don't know if he's coming back to YouTube now, considering he made a video that says goodbye YouTube, but he's had quite the journey. There's a website for this and everything, but he, on one of the videos I remember him talking about why he chose the visuals the way he did. It took inspiration from games like Journey, Okami, uh, Firewatch, etc. Those kind of games. Those games have simple colors, but very contrasting on purpose to draw the eye of the player. I will link his channel in the description if you want to go watch them. But he does talk about the journey he took making this game. I recommend giving them a watch if you wanted to have some insight into game development in general. The last area caps off the story with the idea that sometimes we don't have the chance to say a proper goodbye. The narrator says he split from his dad with a bitter argument when he was younger and never had the chance to make amends. He regrets that. It's a very sad message, and honestly, it's quite the way to end the journey, per se? Oh wait, speaking of end, isn't there one more fox cub? Ah. Yeah. That makes sense. In the distance, the first tree illuminated the wasteland. She couldn't go home anymore. She did the only thing she was capable of. Moving forward. My dad died alone in the middle of the wilderness. I should have been talking to him more. I should have done a lot of things differently. And then we finally get to the first tree. The origin of life, and I think again the end of life. Joseph finds sort of a bittersweet ray of hope at the end. Knowing he is going to tend to the honors and, I'm assuming, funeral, or at least arrangement, of his father. And he is going to go do that. He's going to go honor him, and his wife, Rachel, is going with him. It's not necessarily a happy ending, per se, but it does show that he, like the fox, can only walk forward. And as the fox, you get to leave a message to your cubs that they may see again in the afterlife. Wait, that's what the stars were for?! I can make my tweet to hashtag nature longer? I Note taken, the stars make your message at the end longer, so maybe collect them for that reason. Hmm. The fox gets a chance to leave a message for her fox cubs. A message to a, I'm assuming some kind of server or collection of messages. Uh, I can only imagine what's been sent to that. Huh. Also, I cried like a baby at the end of this. I had a whole skit where I was gonna have the Hitman from the Hitman series come back and murder, like, come stab me in the back and I cry because my emotions finally let out, but it, no, seriously, both times I've played this game, at the end, I am just, I, I am just crying, like, like, no, like no one's business. I don't even know where it comes from. One second my heart's cold and dead like always, and the next- With her final words, the fox disappears and the dream ends. And then you, Joseph, wake up. Yo, this is sweet digs, my dude. I love the kitchen. You got some nice views. I mean, that's a bit small for a bathroom. You know, I envy this. I have an apartment. My bathroom is tiny. You can leave the house and explore the grounds. And it took me 20 minutes in the first playthrough to find this the first time. You go to the tent in your backyard. I thought there was some bigger quest marker array thing. Uh, maybe I just didn't notice the obvious fireflies pointing to it, but you go into the tent. And I walked around the whole property. Once you're in the tent, the fox spirit appears and Joseph follows. Not that I would be so keen to follow a fox spirit. I mean, have you seen fox myths and kitsune specifically? <clears throat> Joseph follows for quite a while before arriving at a smaller version of the first tree. He sees the foxes walk away, onto their next journey, mother and children, together again. It really solidifies the message of the game that we should treasure the life and those we have left and care for. And this scene is a great bookend to that. 
Are we going to ignore the fact that you left your wife in bed? Isn't she going to worry about you when she wakes up or something? Or how you left your front door open at 5 or 6 in the morning, maybe earlier? Why did you leave the house so dang oily? I'm chasing fox spirits! You're, you're chasing ghosts? No, 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 it's the fox from the dream I told you about! Get back in here, you'll freeze your butt off! If you sat through all that, thank you for being with me. If you skipped to here, hello, for the first or second time. If you played the game for yourself, you probably thought my summary was horrible, and I don't blame you, that's fair. But this game shines in two lights, in post. First, through the message, of course, to keep the ones you care for close to your heart. Spend as much time as you can, call them, hang out with them, whatever you can do with life. I get that. I, I try to my every day anyway. We don't have as much time as we would like with the people we care for, so don't part on bitter terms if you can help it, whether it be family or friends. And that sometimes is all we can do to keep moving forward in the face of trouble, loss, even blessings, and life in general. But what I was moved by just as much is what the game dev said both in earlier posts on the website about the first tree, uh, but also just on YouTube channel stuff. The game developer made this game while working full time. His YouTube channel is called Game Dev Unlocked, although again he seems to be done with YouTube, but I recall a section of the website that I can't find now. It's David's approach of not having a zero day. Sometimes he only had 10 or 20 minutes to work on this passion project daily, balancing work, family, and everything else, and it was very difficult at the best of times. But I remember how it was described in the text that I could swear I read one time, but I can't find out. Progress can be as simple as adding one letter or line of text, changing a color palette or a single brush stroke. This idea of slow perseverance has been a lesson I took to heart and is so cool to see from any creator. It's not groundbreaking by any means, but to see the finished product from that process and that philosophy is hopeful and inspiring. Not to mention this was practically solo. Like, I know he worked with people on assets, music, and stuff, but everything else, the work of putting it together and getting all that made, like, for the game itself, like, all arranged, that was practically solo. And the fact that the dev voiced the narrator makes this game even more intimate. It feels like a personal project, a painting you experience on your own rather than simply a game. It's, it's really cool. I think a fair amount of people felt the message of this game, too. You can skip the section if you want. I just, just a slight side. Um, thank you, lastly, David. You've made something that will inspire many generations to come, many people to come, with an important message, both in story and as a game by itself, the product, for making an amazing experience that teaches so much, reminds us of so much, and is an example of just slow but strong willpower and perseverance. Even if you're not going to stick around YouTube, and I don't know if you'll even see this, I wanted to express my gratitude for a very impactful thing. I'm not going to forget it, and hopefully I might make a game of my own one day. You know you've made something special. You've documented that and shown that, and I hope that you keep that pride and know that you've done something very wonderful. Thank you for staying through this, I hope it wasn't too boring. Check out the game if you can, and play it for yourself even if you've heard this. It's worth a closer look if you have the time. Now I'm off to the path uh, to find my personalized wolf. <laughs> Wait. Huge shout out to our patrons Jack Cooper, Ninja Blade, Kit Nightwood, and Too Much Desu. You're all amazing and badass, and I love you. If you got some dosh to spare and wish to help support the channel, we have the link in the description to our Patreon, and we also have memberships if you wish to help join the channel. You get some sweet emotes, and we're working on more awards, but you don't have to, but we do appreciate the support, and it helps a long way to everyone on the channel. Uh, have a great good rest of your day, and if you're watching this on your lunch break, uh, thank you, and uh, may you have the, the strength and sanity to get back to work and not go crazy. I've already been there, it's great. Anyway, bye!